Today I will be playing my raid deck, at least for a little bit, and trying to push to gold one. I was oh so close. I had four of these things, a win streak going, and then I got beat because poison on a Krogius four on my opponent lit. Game ended with him at two health. Two. Ah, so frustrating. But trying to get up to gold one. In my uh, onward march towards platinum. Really is a uh, encouraging thing to have something to play for. Before it was just go in, play constructed cues, play draft cues, get some more cards, and nothing ever really changed. Occasionally try for a big tournament, but those are few and far between. Plus, there's scheduling issues. There's always scheduling issues. Gaku Sean. So the deck that I am playing, if you take the Yeti deck that I started out with on Friday night, Friday night? Thursday night. Thursday night, and evolve it a couple of times, you get to this more raid-focused deck, but still has a significant Yeti presence. It does have three, six more legendaries from the new set. Um, it's running three Blitzmane and three Lorises. You see the first Loris there, and it's not going to be useful for me, but... Torrent Witch. And Nephrax. Fascinating. Well, we'll drop double Storm Shapers and see what happens. Maybe a Storm Shaper and a Loris. I think that's a better play. <laughs> I think. Because I don't have any lanes left if I do double Storm Shapers. Everything goes according to plan. If everything doesn't go according to plan, well then, yay. I have one aggressive creature, and I'll spawn one if nothing dies. So... That will mean I'll have three attackers if I want to go down that avenue. Don't expect my Loris in two to be able to survive, though. No, oh, no, it's going to. Oh, nice. That's two attackers. That was not the best spot. Um... I have to play this guy as an attacker, but I don't really have any place to play him. Ugh. That's disappointing. Well, I need the attack. Battle. That's three attacks, so Loris can come out here. And I have two rank twos on the board. I get one aggressive creature for free in this hand, and then a Warhound Raider to go with it for two aggressive creatures if necessary. I would prefer the Calder Mystic and your Auntie Warlord, but if I need it to get to level Alorus level three, that's what I gotta do. Um Okay, so lane one, lane two will just heal over dead. Uh, yeah, uh, I quite like this. Let's drop Cauldron Mystic and the Urati Warlord. And the oh so necessary courser. And that will be three creatures attacking, and then two Loris threes. And I hope I have an aggressive card in this next hand. I do. I've got plenty of aggressive. In fact, this whole hand is aggressive. So I should be able to get. He shouldn't have anything that can kill off my uh, Lorises. They are now outside of soft gated removal range. Uh, I think that this is going to be a dominant performance at this point. The only problem is I can't really deal with that 7-7 over there in lane 3. Or 5. 
Oh, let's see. Did anybody join me? Welcome, Vancouver and Varulia. Acromeba. Ooh, fun. All right, let's see here. Let's go with a bunch of Calder Mystic triggers. One. Two. Three. Battle. And four. And double Loris triggers. Pink to pink. And I feel pretty good about my board state. 2.1, or I guess 2.2 .2 now with uh, double level threes and two additional creatures that have been buffed. Brave Packs. Okay, you take 11 damage to save your Necromeba. <laughs> I can live with that trade. Um, hmm. Let's see. Let's drop the Cauldron Mystic. Okay, that's a concession. Good game. All right. Two more to get to gold one. The next threshold that I can't fall back from. Welcome, Indy Incorporated. Samurai J. Trying to be Samurai, but apparently it was taken, so he changed the I to a J. Which makes him Samurai. For amusement's sake, to me, I'm going to call him Samurai L. Jackson. Oh gosh, I'm dead. I can concede now. <laughs> this deck doesn't do particularly well against zombies. Um, I could play the Cauldron Mystic. That doesn't seem like a great choice, though. But that's what I'm going to do because it's Zrath will it's Zrath willable. If that hits, yes, I will gladly trade that for Zrath. No aggressive creatures to make my Loris grow. So I won't be playing Loris. This will be a Calder Mystic and either Dendrify or Warhound Rider. Spirit Cleave. Welcome, Grumpf, Ovalis One. There's Wrath. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I'm going to call her Mystic and Dendrify that. I can't let his wrath sit out here. That's the way to uh, inevitable doom by Zombie Dread Knight. Now, if he doesn't have his wrath still here, this hand looks really nice. I drop your Auntie Warrior Lord and where would Patriarch? I could drop uh, Dreadbolt. Okay. I guess that's fine. Oh my gosh. And Zrath lives. Now he does double zombie dread knight because that's the way this goes. Every bloody time I play zombies. Without fail. Zombie Dread Knight? Eh. 
every single time. I hate zombies. Ugh. There's nothing I can do now. I'm dead. I can't kill the Zerath because it grew plus four, plus four with regen two. Um, nothing I can do. I can make a futile attempt. Uh, I throw you there. You there. That'll clear a zombie Dread Knight. Um, and it gives me the ability to get Loris to raid up the rank 2. Oh, man. Every single time. I miss one draft, and then it's zombie Dread Knight, zombie Dread Knight, and I'm dead. Ugh. Maybe I'm overselling things. Maybe it's not as bad as I think it is. Zombie Dread Knight 2. Hey, look, it's a Zombie Dread Knight 2. There's nothing I can do. This game is over. Oh, that hurts. I'm so close to gold one. Hey, it's Kit. I haven't seen Kit around in ages. Welcome, Kit. Oh, come on. I don't want to go right back into... Okay, this is something that I think Stoneblade really needs to fix. Is getting matched up with the same person twice in a row. Because there is nothing more frustrating than getting your butt handed to you only to turn around and get absolutely destroyed again by the exact same person. Oh, that was a terrible play. I have no idea what I was thinking there. Absolutely none. That was a horrible, horrible play. Zrath and Drum Zombie Dread Knight. Hey, look! <laughs> it's the Zrath and the Zombie Dread Knight. Oh, I can clear the board, or I can get my Loris to level. I think I want to go with the board clear. If I don't, he's going to drop another Zombie Dread Knight, and then we'll be just done. Because that's the way this game plays. So if I'm going to go with the board clear, I'm going to open lane this now. Could gamble with Color Mystic, but it's better to do double Garanti. Battle. Garanti here. Garanti here. Well, he's already seen two of his zombie Dread Knights level to level two. So that means Zraths are high, high value targets for me if I can kill them. Or dendrify them. Necromiba. Awesome. Well, let's see here. Take my freebie here. Take five damage. Battle and drop the Storm Shaper here. Storm Shaper may have been the wrong play, but I don't really know what else to have played there. I'm doing pretty well, Kit. Uh, if you can't tell, I don't keep my messages up. Uh, Finally getting back to doing some more serious soul forging now that there's something to play for. 
i.e. the ranking system. Uh, I kind of got away from it before that. But I'm so I've got three attackers, so if I drop a Loris after the fact, it will level up. So I think I'm going to go with Patriarch, which unfortunately doesn't clear the Hellforged Avatar, but does allow me to clear the Abyssal Brute. Go with the battle. And then drop Loris here. And he will become a 611, which should be enough to clear that Necromiva. Unless he drops a Zombie Dread Knight 2, in which case I regret playing that there. Oh, I didn't really have a choice. I guess I could have played it over here and cleared it and died to the Zombie Dread Knight 2 because it's plus 4, plus 4. So, yeah, okay. I'm screwed if I do, screwed if I don't. Epidemic. Oh, thank goodness I've got Werewood Patriarch in this hand. So I will spawn an elemental. Yay! And then spawn in a place where it's useful. And I will guess drop Cauldron Mystic. No, 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 no. I only have two creatures attacking. I have to drop Korok. Korok is a necessity. Let's not just throw him away against the uh, Hellforged. And Werewood is a necessity to get Loris to level. Now Loris manages to survive and become the rank three. That is a good sign, Kit. Yeah, I don't know if you've read up on all the hassles they've had with the uh, updated client. Um, overall, after they've done a couple of quick fixes, I'm all right with the new client. On PC, I have very little to complain about except for the deck builder. Um, okay, this is a great place to be. I drop the Courser there, Patriarch there. Uh, would I rather kill that or that? Yeah. Well, let's see here. So I have to drop one of the aggressive creatures. That's just a no-brainer. So if I drop you there, we and you there. That'll grow. You and you take out the brute battle. And then we will throw a blocker there with the plus three plus three. Should be enough to take out the health forged avatar unless it gets buffed. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Spirit Cleave. Spirit Cleave is always confusing. Always confuses me. In scenarios like this, I had a much larger health creature on the board, but because it was ranked 3, Spirit Cleave couldn't target it, so it was the targeted amongst all of the other creatures. And yeah, he conceded, because that time I had him pretty well dominated. I managed to endure the early game's wrath, uh, Dread Knights, and just took over. <sighs> so, for those of you that might want to see what I am playing, I really need to rename this. We've got... Oh, this is not what I... This is... I don't even know what this is. What the heck? Uh, save that. You grow wide, not in you. There we go. Uh, three Blitz Mains and three Lorises. So that's the big investment for this deck. Uh, if you don't have them, I don't think this deck is viable. Uh, you could go back and deal with 
the Yeti deck that I was doing the other day when I was down in bronze that worked pretty well. It was a budget deck. This is not a budget deck. Although it is cheaper than some top decks that I've played, it's still got nine legendaries in it. And no commons, although several rares. Warhound Raider is a necessity for the free aggressive creature, as I think anybody that's played against the raid deck has figured out by now. Uh, Korok is just another aggressive so that I can trigger these two. You could replace Korok with something else, but I don't think you can replace Blitzman and Loris. It needs to be aggressive, whatever it is, though. There's not a lot of great aggressive options. Hey, and congrats, Kit, on Honeymoon. Because that implies you got married, and congratulations. Ace Trainer. I'm going second, so my options are Calder Mystic, Courser, and Loris, or Calder Mystic, Courser, and Dendrify. Depending upon what he reveals he's playing. Nova. I, I want to go with Calder Mystic, Corsair, Loris play. <laughs> it gives me a decent shot at getting one or both of those guys that gone. Go with Mystic. Go with Loris. Come on, hit that, hit that. No, nope, hit that. Uh, we'll put the Corsair there. Hit that, hit that, hit that, hit that. Yes! Perfect. Could not have asked for a better set of uh, Calder Mystic triggers. I have plenty of aggressive creatures in this hand to level up Loris, so if Loris lives, um, I could just drop Korok and Corsair and have it at that. Uh, and I've got a Burnout to protect the Loris if necessary. So if he drops a Oros in front of it, which is all the rage to do in this scenario, I can handle that too. The Taru Sprites. Now he's going to replace it so he can level up or grow Nova. Relic Hunter. Ah. Uh, Rudd. Well, I cannot handle the Relic Hunter. That's... Disappointing. <laughs> okay, so Loris is unfortunately not going to survive this. Um, I think I dropped another Cauldron Mystic. Durante Warlord. Cauldron Mystic here. No, Cauldron Mystic here, because I don't want the damage on the Cauldron Mystic. I want another Warlord, because once the Warlord's played, he's worthless. So Cauldron Mystic here. Forcer here. And probably should have done that in a different order. Well, Warlord there. And I lose my Loris, but I take out the rest of his board, except for, of course, the Relic Hunter. Relic Hunter is going to be a problem. Yeah, where would Patriarch in this hand with four creatures currently on the board that it would buff? That's a promising board state to have. Now, I suspect two of them will not survive, but uh, welcome, Omen Raven, Cyber Cena 89, J Minch Grease, and I think I said hello to everybody else. This is me going for gold one. I'm currently, I believe, two wins away from gold one if I don't lose. Ace Trainer is thinking about what he's going to do. Now, if he doesn't make another move for five minutes, you're going to sit here and listen to me yammer on. Yammer, 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 yammer. And then I'll win, but that seems unlikely. Thus far, I've only had one person time me out, and it was a game in which I got double Loris threes on 1.4. And I kind of understood. That's just one of those frustrating scenarios. 
Okay, so Cork will probably go in and take out the. Uh, Ah, it doesn't quite take it out now, because it'll spawn that and grow to a 6-6. Six, six. Yeah. That's probably still worth doing. Drop Korok here. Drop Werewood here. Come on, hit the Spring Dryad and the... well... Both my Calder Mystics live, so I can battle and then drop the Courser. Uh, I don't want to overwrite anything here, but I can overwrite here. And even if it, it neither Calder Mystic hits this, the Courser theoretically will kill it when it attacks next turn. Oh, no. Board wipe. Excellent. Calder Mystic is a uh, fairly strong card. And he's a Yeti, so uh, this Yuranti Warlord, unless he drops big things in front of them, gets an extra three damage for free against anything blocking. Because I think that's what I'm going to play, regardless of what my opponent does. Barbarian Scarab. Picks up Warlord over there, that's fine. Da, 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 da. Six. Down. I think I do that there. That there. Ah, I was hoping it would hit the uh, Harbinger. I'll go ahead and trade off for the Harbinger. And not a great 2.1, but we'll see what my opponent does. Harbinger of the Spring 2, and Scarab 2, that would be really painful for me. Nova 2, that's also really painful for me. Um, yeah. Don't really know what I can do against that. Drop one creature and hope it hits the Harbinger of the Spring too, so I can burn it out. Come on, hit it. Nope, oh, hit Nova. And we will Patriarch then. Uh. This looks clear. I don't have any raid creatures anyways, but I wouldn't be able to trigger a raid this turn. Hopefully he misses, and my Yuranti Warlord... Nope, that's not going to be a miss. And both of those come into play not from hand, so that double buffs... Oh. Ow. So I can clear both the big guys. I throw the courser here. Battle. I throw the storm shaper here. And the warlord two there. Clearing both his rank two creatures. Relatively inexpensively. We 
doop, doop, doop. Welcome, Temp Man Sa. All right, so I've got two Blitz Mains in this hand, but I don't have anywhere I could put him where he would live. Uh, if the Storm Shaper lives, which, given my opponent's deck, I think is likely, I'm going to get a 4-2 Lightning Worm in some way. So I have two attackers. I could drop a Blitz Main battle and drop the other Blitz Main to get the trigger. I don't really like that. I think I'd prefer to drop a Cauldron Mystic or two. Wish I had some Corsairs to go with those two Cauldron Mystics, though. Star Sprite. Override it with your Relic Hunter. No, drop neither wolves. Okay. I've got three attackers. Hmm. My problem here is that I don't have spectacular options. I think I'm going to battle first, take the five. Drop the Cauldron Mystic. Um, here, let's main there. Let's main will hit it for five, which is admittedly not quite enough, but decent. Okay, I've got another Yoranti Warlord. That's nice. Um, I don't think. Well, I might have enough attackers for that Blitz main. Maybe. You should battle first and then overwrite your uh, guitar sprite. That's what works best for me, because that means I get three attackers, and that Blitz main can be much more useful when it has a uh, burnout attached to it. Thinking a lot. For anyone wondering, both my daughter and my wife are back lying in bed taking a uh, afternoon nap, which is how I got free to come and stream. Come on. Okay. Um, not entirely sure I agree with that. Um, okay, that I can understand now. Now, Blitz Main does not do what I want it to do. Oh, wait, yeah, it does. Gosh, of course it does. I have one, two, three attackers, and a Yuranti Warlord, or a board wipe. And an additional eight damage on top. Dropping him to 39. And I saved my uh, Lightning Worm spawning defender. That guy is also pretty good for this kind of deck. Just because he's so difficult to kill. He's got enough health that he's outside of burnout range. Uh, that seems like a desperation play. Because it doesn't kill the Blitz main. Uh, which means that I think this game is over. 
could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain if I get onto Oil Lord here. Yeah. <laughs> opponent has resigned. All right. I need one more win to get to gold one. One win. And then I'll be at the next threshold and can't fall lower. And that's very important. Because getting to those thresholds so that you don't fall back when you lose a game. I need one more win. I was at this point earlier, and I had my opponent, I swear, dead to rights. I don't remember the exact health totals, but 3.1, he drops. Killian 3 to level up his Krogius to level 3. That was painful. But I wasn't dead yet. I could race him. And then he dropped a Malice Hermit that poisoned his Krogius. And I lost the game with him at 2 health after my last attack when I was still alive. So the poison Krogius' heal was all he needed. And it was so frustrating. One, two, excellent. I quite like this hand. Now, Wasson, I've played numerous times lately. Uh, was he the guy that we just talked about? No, he's got... Oh, that's weird. Fine. Um... Honestly, I like this play better. Battle. Now, I am choosing to do four less damage to my opponent and use Blitzmanes here rather than using the Corsair to kill the uh, Scourge Hydra. That's a deliberate choice that I have three creatures on the board to help facilitate opening up uh, another raid on the next turn. If I do that in the other order, my opponent takes four more damage, but I only have two creatures, both of which can be blocked out and killed by something like, oh, I don't know, a shard plate behemoth. Or a necro slime. But now, I don't have to worry about that. I can go with the Alder Mystic. Alder Mystic, the Blitz Main, Ron Hit Necro Slime, darn it, and the Corsair, Hit Necro Slime, Hit Necro Slime, darn it, Battle, three creatures attacked, move that over to get five damage on that 7-7, seven, seven, dropping it to a 2-2, two, two. I feel pretty good about that turn. Would have felt better if my uh, Calder Mystic had hit the Necro Slime. No coursers in this hand, no aggressive creatures. Likely to only have two creatures out here that are uh, actually going to be attacking. So this one. And that's it. Oh no, this one will attack. It'll have one health after the... Uh... Oh, very nice. Not nice enough, because I still don't have any aggressive creatures, but nice. Alder Mystic. That was kind of a mistake. I should have put the Calder Mystic in front of the Dream Tree. Now I have to do that and clear the dream tree here. I guess as it turned out, that was the right play. But don't give him a free play with the uh, poison dream tree. Start play behemoth. 
That's perfectly fine. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Um, yeah, I easily clear this board. So I've got two attackers over here, so I drop the Warlord there. Link seven. I guess it doesn't actually quite clear it necessarily. Drop Blitzmane there. Battle. And he's left with a 1-1 on the board. Come on. I win this one, I get to gold one. Uh, I can try that. There's settings. Full screen. I still have bars. In fact, there appears to be no difference between full screen and windowed, except that I lose the uh, little Soulforge title bar at the top where the window is. And there is the concession, and that is Math Nut to Gold 1. Very nice. All right. So I think I still have some old draft codes. Let's go take a look. Mail.com. I don't know if these are actually still any good since the upgrade, <laughs> but we can try them and see. Uh, let's see here. Uh, da 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 da. Soul for it, soul for it, soul for it. codes. Twitch.tv, MathNut, Messages. What was the last one I gave away? FBZB. FBZB. I don't see FBZB in uh, this. Gary. Uh, Hmm. Well, maybe I'm crazy. Let's search my mail for that code. Maybe I don't have some giveaway codes. I thought I did. Ah, there we go. Nick Fiorio. FCBZ. No, that was the very last one I had. Never mind. That was on seven. What? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, JLCC. Man, that was stupid to me. Sorry that you're sitting here. Oh, crud. My camera fell off. La 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 la. Thanks, spam. JLCC. Okay. So I have absolutely no idea if this is going to work. None whatsoever. But we will try and do a giveaway. And in the event that it does not work, I will give away one of my shareable set seven. Well, we'll talk about that. We're going to try this first. Uh, let's see here. Following, I don't want following. I want me. Where's my channel? Uh, let's see here. Really, Twitch? Not helpful. My channel. Channel. Twitch giveaways. There we go. Pound gold. Keyword. Pound gold one. All right, this is theoretically to give away a draft code. We will see if it works. You saw everything. 
What do you mean you saw everything? Oh, you might have seen everything back here behind my computer monitor. It's a giant mess. I don't know. <laughs> I'm confused. But that's pretty standard for me. Um, by the way, let's see here. Welcome to Eris 130. Keep dodging Sephiroth. Hardrada, Heroes Kage. Mike Dawes. I think that's it. Welcome. I have pants on. That's all that's important. All right, we will roll off in five, four, three, two. Oh, hi, wait, I can do this better. Let's see here. That one? No. Really? Weird. Properties. Chrome. That's right. For some reason, Chrome, ever since I updated Chrome, I can't get it to... It's like it's privacy protected so the screen capture doesn't work. So you're going to have to take me at my word when I roll off on this then. Because my roller utility is in Chrome. Going to roll in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Congratulations to Hargrata. Now I'm going to send you this draft code. Draft code. Let me know if it works. <laughs> Copy. Paste. Send. All right, so I'm going to take a quick break here instead of play and actually talk a little bit about the new client because I haven't done a review of the new client yet. I wanted to share some of my thoughts on it. Uh, I'll, in a few days' time, I'm going to type something up to send to SBE on a, or post to the forums in a full comment section. But I got to say that from the get-go, the uh, main landing screen is a lot better than the old one. Uh, at least for PC. I'm going to direct everything I talk about right now towards the PC. This layout is leaps and bounds better than what the old client had. With the menus on the left, all these things across the top work much better. Uh, your listing of current games. I have one small problem with this. It always defaults to campaign. I assume that's probably because I haven't played the first couple of missions of the campaign, the new tutorials, but I don't want it to default to campaign. I want it to default to all. I know for a new player, you come in, you click campaign, you click start new, and it gets you right into the game without any other steps, but I really would prefer it here. Aside from that, this screen looks much nicer. I love the fact that you've got uh, news and notices now. Um, not terribly thrilled with Wagyu over here. Uh, who is for some reason not animated. Huh. Really sorry, he's supposed to be animated. Must be something, I don't know. Weird. Um, but yeah, this screen works a lot better. You've got a friends list that is actually alphabetized. You can't change the order, but at least you can find somebody in it. Considering every person I've ever traded with has, or sent a giveaway to is in this friends list. I've got a good feeling that a lot of people aren't still playing, but because these people that are at uh, Bronze 1 and have no portrait, probably haven't logged in since uh, the new client. Everybody that has a portrait has logged in, so that gives me, you know, a decent idea of who's still playing. I can go and find a few people that have made some progress. 
because Randall's isn't bronze three. Hey, outrageous at uh, silver four. Go outrageous. I think Dark Hands is the only one I know that is on my friends list that's it. Okay, this isn't up to date because I'm 99% certain the Dark Hands is already in gold. So, that's disappointing. Uh, tournaments, I haven't done one yet, but this seems reasonable. I've got old draft and old constructed in progress. These will probably never get completed. Campaign screen, I'm not terribly thrilled with this. It's a little bit more readable and usable than the last one. Right click to inspect mission, which does nothing. <laughs> right click to inspect mission. Um, your play gives you a few things here. Now, I know that there is a lot of lash back about the loss of untimed play. Uh, at least untimed random. I do feel like that's a bit of a problem. I also feel like it's one that Stoneblade can probably go and fairly straightforwardly address in the future. Um, click on single player. Just have a... Uh, oh, not single player play. Back. Really? Go into unranked, select your deck, and then have an option whether you want time or untimed. And Challenge Friend is, of course, uh, on time as well. Collection, this screen is my biggest problem with the new client. Uh, there is a lot wrong here. <laughs> First of all, you have to look at it in the uh, card view mode. You don't have a list mode, which is a lot simpler. and gets you a lot more cards on the screen at a time. Uh, second... You don't have the ability to well, balance. This is much snappier in terms of filtering than the old client was, which is much appreciated. I broke way too in chain. Effect quality is off. Hey, Wagyu's moving again. Thank you, guys. Randall's his titanium already. Awesome. I don't know why it wouldn't update in real time. It should. I would assume it's pulling from the same database, but whatever. Uh, so... Not having a list view also means there's no way to sort cards. So if I come in here and I search for, let's say I look for anything with um, aggressive. Since I've actually done this in the not too distant past. Scrolling through this list, I look through here and go, okay, what's the best option for me to add to my aggressive deck? And there's no simple way to say. There is also no way to change and view all level twos at the time and all level threes. So if you want to compare the two, say I want to compare level three Ator to level three Lightning Tamer. I don't know why I would, but hypothetically, you have to bring up each card individually. You can't change everything to a level one, level two, level three view, which I think is a drawback. Uh, the other major drawback I have here is their search covers too many fields. If I try to find all the creatures that have raid, I get every card from the new set. Which is a major problem because the uh, set name is included in the filter criteria. Or the search criteria. Since you can already sort, sort by, filter by the set, Having this search the set name is pointless and, in fact, harmful. Uh, because I was also trying to find Varna for a deck earlier. Yeah. Found him, but it's not nearly as easy as it should be. In fact, I'm not finding him now. There he is. 
Uh, forging, this works fine. I don't have any concerns or complaints about it. I've bulk scrapped everything that I had. That's why I'm at 4.3 million silver. Sharing, this works reasonably well. Um, no major complaints. Common rare. You can easily find all of your shareable cards. Open packs. I don't have any packs to open. Let me go ahead and... Perfect. We. So I don't think anybody's going to be out playing these old things. Collection, open packs. I've Since they've fixed the servers, I've found this to be a lot smoother. You can very quickly go through your packs. If you like, it's faster than I ever was able to open them in the old client. But it's opening packs. There's not much to say there. I still wish it had a multi-pack open option. Store is the store. Nothing too fancy in here. A little bit more organized than the old system, but still just the store. And then by gold, I haven't even looked at, but there we go. All right. I think that's enough talking on the new client. Um, one other thing I do want to mention, I think the, I, the new way of showing the daily rewards up here is great. I think 10 wins is a very tall order to ask for new players to be able to get their daily tickets. Uh, I know that they've tripled the number of tickets they're giving, and you only need to get to four for your first win, but I think that is still awfully steep for new players. I would love to see them lower that down to probably get one ticket with the first win, one ticket with the third, and one ticket with the five. And then you can get new players more reasonably being able to do it. Or have other ways to get tickets besides daily online wins. Anyways, let's see what the gold rank looks like. <laughs> Argrata, I guess if you like the question mark as a portrait, that is perfectly fine. Yeah, so this really doesn't update in real time if Strandall's already titanium. Doesn't surprise me that Randall's is already titanium, one of the top players of the game. I know Gotta Be KD isn't there yet. He was. I saw him earlier today in silver rank. I can never find the uh, breakdown. Is there? So it goes: bronze, silver, gold, platinum, titanium. Is there is one between gold and titanium? Correct. Also, just because it amuses me, I'm glad I can see my total card counts here. The fact that I have 10,000 commons out there, most of which are shareable, just amuses me greatly. Well, the first thing I notice about gold level constructed is that it's taking me longer to find a match. Lindy, well, I assume that I can't get matched up against anybody below, like, Silver 3 now, which is why it took longer. Nope, that's a Bronze 1. I feel bad for this person. Now, should I feel bad? I don't actually know, but... Uh, let's see here. That is an annoying starting play. Because I can't actually kill Zrath here. Not Zrath, uh, Xerxes. I can do a lot of damage to him. I can get him down to one health. But I can't actually kill him. So I'll get him down to one health and not give him a creature to take. Battle.
Now, if he epidemics and patron of Tarsus is, yes, he'll steal my Blitz main. Yes, that will be annoying. Um, but that's the kind of thing you've got to expect. I'm not going to have an ability to trigger Loris or Blitzmane here. There's the Epidemic. Or no, that's the Xerxes activation. And Cersei. Nothing I can do about that. Lyria. Nothing I can do about that. Wow. That's... Kind of depressing. Uh, we'll go with two cards that won't actually do anything until next turn to try and trigger a raid. We'll probably use the Aranti Warlord to take out Zer uh, Cersei. Open lane, the Courser. Darn it. Sorrow Maiden. That's actually a fairly substantial problem. Um, let's see here. Four or less. So every card in my hand. I don't see a way I could kill it. Uh, it's kind of a little bit ridiculous all-in strategy to kill it, but could. I don't think I want to do that, though. I think I want to go with the Storm Shaper. Courser, you're onto the Warlord. Now, I fully expect the uh, Storm Shaper to get eaten by Sorrow Maiden, but I did get Loris up to level 2, which makes these Cerseys useless against it, which was kind of my goal in that choice. Now I expect the Cersei in two to move the lane one to take out the uh, Warlord, and then of course Sorrow Maiden takes out. Oh, Sorrow Maiden takes out what? Yeah, Loris. There we go. Okay, well, that was disappointing. On the bright side, I get a free token, and we'll get to kill off Sorrow Maiden for free. Arsene's Necrolord, so you're going to... Nothing on your side has died. Yeah, no friendly creatures have died this turn, so yeah. That's that. Go. And there's no way to trigger Loris here, so we'll just go Yorante Warlord. And Korok. Go ahead and clear that Tarsus Necrolord. On. I was running Epidemic, so this guy is not safe, but reasonably... Oh man, this is terrible. Pretty safe. The only thing that will take him out that I've seen is Epidemic 2. Lyria, bring back a rank 1 creature of some form. Lyria brings back Lyria. Awesome. And Cersei 2, that's more problematic. Lightning Worm, okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and clear Cersei 2. And I could clear Cersei. Lyria 2. I can clear Cersei 2 with Burnout. I think I want to do that. There we go. 
Now I've got two creatures left. One of them has five health, one of them seven, so neither one of them dies to a single epidemic. I don't have... doesn't matter, but I would have enough uh, creatures to trigger a raid, but there are no raid creatures in my hand. Oh, now I die to an epidemic. I die. It dies. Patron of Tarsus. Okay, so I get one more Lightning Worm, and that'll be that. I'm fine with that. Uh, Calder Mystic. Hmm. I could give myself another Lightning Worm by playing the Warlord here. That's going to leave a fine. Yeah, I think I like that better. The raid doesn't matter, but this way I potentially get one more lightning worm out of my call or my storm shaper. And then that and get six damage. Perfect. <sighs> so if Zarandals is at Titanium. How, anyone have any idea how long it took him to get there? I know he's a great player, but I can't imagine just going and winning. What is it? Let's see here. To get through bronze is 15 games. To get through gold is, or silver is 25. I assume gold is 25 and platinum is 25. So that's 75. 90 wins? Whew. That's impressive. Uh, let's see. I think that this one is kind of a no-brainer with a Yuranti Warlord. Uh, let's see here. I've got a Calder Mystic, so I want to play this first. No, we battle first. Whee! And then we warlord. And then we drop the courser. Come on, hit that with lid. Yes! Then we drop lid's main. And that'll be a board wipe. Perfect. Figuring out how to use Blitzmane as an offensive weapon to wipe the board is very important if you're going to try and play a deck like this. And that one I had, I think, three shots from the Calder Mystic that had one of which had to hit the uh, Sorrow Arbster. Sorrow Maiden, sorry. Uh, Xerxes and Xerxes. That's fine. I've got three attacking creatures and I've got a Yuranti Warlord. Um... Yeah. <laughs> Question is, do I want to really play the Blitzmane, or would I prefer to play Storm Shaper and get my seven, my level two work, atta seven attack lightning worms going? I think we'll do that. The Urantu Warlord clears both Straths. Or not Strath, Xerxes. I'm going to remember the names one of these days. Ah. Two hours? Okay, I can see multi queuing and ranked. Um, I haven't done that. I don't find the game as enjoyable when I'm in four games at once. Uh, Cersei 2, that's problematic. But he put it in front of a creature that's not going to attack it, so okay. Okay, so that goes there. Uh, eight. Sixteen. That doesn't quite work out. Oh well. Yeah. 
guess we go with Prefer not to do it that way. Ah. We'll just overwrite there. I don't like doing that. Battle. Blitz main will clear the patron. Let's see here. I'm at. He's at 53. But he's got a Cersei 3 on the board. That's a problem for me. Um. The trick is if he just said Cersei, okay. So he's gonna let me keep spawning my lightning worms. Oh gosh, Lyria. Filling the board. Grim got warrior. Fine. Uh, so I think that this is another one of those no-brainers where I need to do your Auntie Warlord clears three creatures, which eh, minor drawback. Oh no, that still lives. Uh, battle. Burnout and free creature, free creature. <laughs> huh, I can't see what a level three lightning worm looks like. That's disappointing. Good, the I don't have one. I guess I can do it the hard way, which is to come in here, find my lightning worm. Nope, can't do it that way either. I have no idea what the uh, level three lightning worm stats are. Ow, that stings. Let's see here. He's going to be minus five, minus five to my board. So, where would Patriarch? Yeah, let's go ahead and Patriarch here. Do, 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 do. Let's battle. Let's overwrite this guy. And let's overwrite that. That way, if he Xerxes, the only thing he gets is the 2-2. Two, two. And I've got Yorontu World War 3, which is really nice. Hey, look, you got the 2-2. Two, two. But I'm spawning lightning worms right now. Um, particularly the lightning worm 3, which is really going to be fun. Zemus. That's a wasted play, because when I play the Yorontu Warlord, it will clear it. That one, not so much. Oh, right. The rank three puts in every available space. Somehow or another, I forgot that, too. Uh, hmm. Let's see here. Really not much I can do, though. I'm going to click Battle. Noink. You're on to Warlord. And victory rush. Because Cersei would kill anything I played here, or potentially. 
Really just need to be able to get one creature through for more damage at this point. There we go. There's a concession. Good game, Lindy. That was hard fought. Um, I'm actually surprised that it lasted as long as it did, so. Working my way up gold. Oh, patrol. Right. Sobra. That one came up instantly. Let's see what rank this guy is at. It's not a name I recognize. But he is at gold. Um, that's somewhat surprising to me. I had figured that anybody that was at gold would be a name I would recognize. but and It's not ringing a bell. Anvil Breaker. Oh, this is going to be fun. This will be the first time I've actually seen the, uh, uh, the new Iron Beard in action. One, two, That Nexus bubble? Yeah. Three. Four. I'm quite happy to let him have a new Terra creature in the center lane. Because <laughs> that means his Nexus bubble is worthless. I don't have any way to get rid of it, so that's a potential long-term problem. Thus far, I feel pretty good about my position. Welcome, by the way, to... Dorbic 2, Guybrew, and Sonia or Soraria 182. Anvil Breaker doesn't move it because my board's full, but it was a free play for him. Another Nexus Bubble. I easily, easily have uh, the raid for this turn. Uh, we will just do battle. That will level him up. That will clear the arc flight. And yeah, let's victory rush him. <laughs> Thirteen, twelve, blitz main. Leave the uh, non Uterra creature in the mid lane, or non Alloying creature in the mid lane. I don't know if he's got anything else in this deck that's mid lane specific, but I'm quite perfectly fine letting that tree folk hit me a couple times. Ugh. I'm sorry, Soraya. I will try and slow down a little bit and let you make sure that you know how things work. Loris is a uh, snowball card. He's fairly simple to counter at rank one. Um, of course, any rank one removal, he doesn't have great stats. But you can drop him on a board that's already raiding 
uh, and he doesn't have to attack to be able to grow into rank 2 right away. Once in rank 2, you've got a shot at camp dealing with him. The soft gate removal and 11 health is not that much, and he's going to have to attack if you've upgraded from level 1 before he will get to the level 3, but yeah, he can snowball pretty hard. And of course, the Courser comes with the War Rider, Warhound Rider, uh, Soulbind Courser, just a 1 1 free aggressive creature. The aggressive is incredibly important. <laughs> See previous conversation about raids. Uh, let's see here. Five, six, so we will throw down the Cauldron Mystic and the War Rider. That gets me three creatures attacking and the Patriarch. Is these guys bigger? Shuffle up, deal an additional 13 damage, and grow it to 16. Yeah, that Blitzmane is terrifying. Um, and we're still in player level 1 for him, so he probably doesn't have a way to handle that Loris. He's had two wasted plays on Nexus Bubble that have done him no good yet. That's not to say they will never do him any good. I guess he's only got one. I thought he played two. That right, one's a Solgrim. And that does clear the Loris. One, yeah, uh, <laughs> 1632, I think I have lethal this turn. Drop Warlord there. Let's main there. I've got three attacking creatures. So that's 1632 plus another 32 from him, 16 from him. That's, that's not quite lethal. Oh wait, no it is. Never mind. I had 32 damage, or uh, 24 damage still coming. Wimp. Come on. Win bonus. Alright. One more victory to uh, gold two. So, Ugg Vimes. Loris. This is the card. Oops. This is the card you're talking about. On a raid, whenever three or more creatures attack in a turn, raid will trigger at the end of turn. He advances a level, advances a level, and then starts buffing everything. Doesn't have great stats, but getting ahead of the level curve means that they get to be really good. Uh, if you don't play him in level one, it's almost not worth playing him. But yeah. He can really snowball hard if you get him with the right cards. So, I have not drafted on stream in quite a while, but I am perfectly happy to try out the new draft format. I haven't actually done any of the uh, tournaments yet. But I would like to try out... Do I have a draft coupon? Nope. 